Good morning. Today we're going to take a look at Psalm 103. And I find Psalm 103 so refreshing. And the reason I, I feel that is because David is going to focus in on all of the good things God does for us. And you know, in the year 2020, <laughs> it's definitely a year to complain about, right? There's so many things changing, being decided for us or done to us, and, and the list could go on and on and on. We can find ourselves complaining or surrounded by those that complain a lot. Well, we have this great book here, the Bible, right? And we can turn to pages such as Psalm 103 and learn um, the, and remember the great things that we can praise the Lord for. Now, Psalm 103 begins, Praise the Lord my soul, all my innermost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord my soul and forget not all his benefits. David begins saying, praise the Lord, all my soul. And he's saying, from my innermost being, so those days I don't feel like it, he's reminding his soul to praise the Lord. And on those days, you're just full of joy and you don't know what else to do, but you know, raise your hand, cry out, scream, cry in joy to the Lord to still praise the Lord. And he'll go on to talk about it from a personal perspective of why he's praising the Lord. But in verse 7, he's going to remember the faithfulness and love that God has for his people. And then that's why he's going to praise the Lord. In verse 7, he made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. What a relief. See, what, he, what David's doing is taking us back to the time of Moses where he probably was coming off of the mountain and seeing the people worshiping that golden calf, committing that sin, right? And God doesn't just harbor his, harbor his anger forever, right? He doesn't treat them the way they should have been treated according to their sin. So what could have been or should have been, the Lord was definitely justified to maybe wipe out the Israelites right then and there as, as they were coming, as Moses was coming off the mountain. But he doesn't. And why? Well, I'm so glad you're thinking that way because verse 11 is going to go into that. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As far as the heavens is for the earth, so great is his love, right? There is no height or no distance that can separate us from his love. He's saying, though the distance, he is the distance maker. The west will never touch the east. He puts the distance there. You can see it there in that verse. He puts that in there and it'll never touch. No, there's no distance or height to stop us. And he doesn't just stop there with a distance analogy for us. He's going to talk about compassion and love. Verse 13, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust from creation, right? As the father has compassion on his children, right? This is the, a father that has mercy, not to be confused with an earthly father that does not, does not, doesn't do good. But the one who has mercy, that's the, the, the one we are to think of. And the Lord is more than that. He is mercy, right? And as a parent, we may get anger, angry at a child's failure, um, that a failure will occur, but it doesn't last, right? What wins over that anger is the compassion and love, just like God. So for those that fear him, that means those that are faithful, those that are servants of the Lord, those who seek to make the Lord the center of their lives, May you praise the Lord, remembering like David, to focus on God for all the good things. And if you catch yourself in complaining, the 2020 complaining year, 
to remember that God is a forgiving God and he wants to crown us in his love and compassion and that we get to receive all these without deserving any of them.